Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk a little bit this morning about spark plugs. For most of us, we have eight in our airplane. Um, as you can see, when they come out of the aircraft, they can look pretty bad. They can look pretty good. You can't look at the condition of a spark plug and tell what's really going on. Now, you can on the business end, if you see carbon, stuff like that, which we see on a lot of airplugs, you also can see that um, there'll be some lead buildup inside the plug. We're going to talk about all those things. One of the first things we do with a spark plug is we want to see, first off, we have to get it out of the aircraft. So to remove a spark plug from an airplane, you need two tools. Well, I actually need two, you need three. Seven sixteenths and a three quarter. These two are used for going on top of the B nut on the lead and then you break the spark plug loose. By doing it this way and securing this to keep this from moving, you won't tear up your harness right here. You do the same thing when you go to reinstall it. You simply lock that nut and then tighten this snugly and now you've reinstalled your lead. This is our lead off of our tester. So this goes over here. The other tool you'll need is a spark plug tool. And these are available from Aircraft Sprues, Aircraft Tool Supply. But Grumman owners being frugal, let me use that word instead of the other obvious word, there's a lot of other options you can use. This is a spark plug tool from Aircraft Tool Supply. You can also go to Harbor Freight and for $2.95 get a 7 8 inch oxygen sensor. It does the same thing. And there's another version of this too that you can use, but this works out well. Now, one of the first things we do when we take a spark plug out of a cylinder, before we do any more work in it, we want to check its resistance. Now, we do so many spark plugs here, you can actually just use an ohmmeter, but we actually have the specialized tool from Tempest, and we put this on a spark plug, and the little LED goes green. That tells us the resistance in the spark plug is below 3,000 ohms. If it goes red, green, red, green, red, green, it's 3,000 to 5,000, and anything over 5,000 is rejected. Here's a couple of plugs that we rejected. They were actually thrown in the trash. No good. Again, verifying, no good. So if you do a lot of plugs, this test is really nice. If not, you can simply use an ohm meter and you want to go from the center electrode inside to the little, um, the little tab inside where your spark plug lead hits. You want to measure the resistance through the plug and the resistance and the resistor inside. Now, inside of that, you'll see a little screw cap in the champions. You'll see a spring, which it pushes down upon. And then let's see if I actually have one left. And a resistor. With champions, and they've had some quality control issues in the past, and they may still be. I've, I've switched over in the shop two years ago to Tempest. The, um, the resistors on a good plug that's worn on the electrode well, we can harvest a good resistor and save a, a, a plug that has good electrodes, but the resistor is bad. The resistance is too high in the plug. And if the resistance is over 5,000 ohms, and believe me, we pull plugs out at 30,000, one meg. Uh, when they're doing that, they're arcing here on the lead inside the barrel, or worst case scenario, they're arcing on the other end back inside the magneto, trashing the mag for you. You can inspect the spark plug. Again, if you do a lot of plugs, you'll want a really neat tool. This is a magnifying glass. allows you to come in and very accurately look at your plug and see what's going on. Let's see. Okay. Now, now that you've got your plugs out, you want to check the gap. They've checked it good for resistance. The first thing we're going to do is go put them in a bead blaster, um, a spark plug cleaner. We're going to clean them. Uh, then we're going to pick out all the lead. We're going to clean it one more time to make sure we've got it all done. Or we can manually clean the lead. Lead's very hard, and a bead blaster, sand blaster, is not going to get the lead out. So what you have is a little vibratory tool here. goes into the plug, slides in the side, vibrates all it, and then you dump all the lead out. Then you go back to the cleaner. After you've done the cleaner, you hit them with air. And then as a final clean, we dip them in 100 low lead, FAA-approved cleaning solvent, let them dry, and then we'll check the gap in all of them. You want your gap to be about 16 thousandths. Champion sells this little tool, so does Tempest. It has a bunch of little different wire gauges on it. But you optimum is about 16 thousandths. If your gap is too big, which plugs do erode and get larger as they go on, well then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have some sort of gap adjusting tool. This is a really nice one. Um, it just very accurately can do it. A little hand one is just as fine. 
you back out the two um, screws and then they just screw on to the end of the spark plug and then you can adjust your gap exactly where you want it. You will get a little bit of a spring back so don't get carried away with these because once you get the gap too much you really can't ungap it unless you go out and you get the specialized tool for increasing the gap and that's a very expensive little tool from Tempest. Also too they sell a go no go uh, spark plug gauge when they get so rounded that that drops over the plug just goes right down and sits here well then this plug it's time to be rejected this plug is still good even though the resistor is bad so these go back in the trash if you have a bad plug well sometimes your threads inside your cylinder which has a helio coil in it can get a little messed up you can get a thread chaser and a thread chaser is nothing more than uh, a set of screws that match the threads on the spark plug and it has a couple of slots to pick up debris this is also the 14 millimeter for the experimentals or cars and this is the 18 millimeter for um, aircraft now if you have a plug that tests bad and by the way this is a, a plug you want to make sure that if you have a plug that has tested bad then what you can do is you can take a die grinder and on this case we put three slots in the side of the plug and the resistor and all is out of it but we've made a thread chaser out of an old spark plug so you can just take one of your old spark plugs die grind three slots two slots four slots whatever you like now you've got a thread chaser for your aircraft so you can save yourself from buying a tool you can actually make one and then when you go to put the tool back uh, the spark plug back in be sure to get a new copper gasket or anneal the old one put some anti-seize on the threads stick it back in the cylinder and again tighten the harness up just like we talked about a lot easier when it's in the airplane wrench and then snug and now I'll take it back off so that is the basics of spark plugs for our engine all of these that I've shown you here are massive electrodes 40E's 3080's there's also the 37BY's which are the long reach plugs uh, whichever plug you use they do require proper service when you change your oil every 25 hours that's a good time to pull your plugs clean them check their gap and rotate them it's a pain in the butt I know but it's good practice and it keeps your airplane running at tip-top efficiency one of the numbers that Lycoming likes to throw out is that your ignition system accounts for 11 percent of your horsepower so a weak ignition will give you minimal having a good strong ignition like an electronic ignition is even better but for magnetos 11% difference in power based upon the spark plug and the wave fronts that the burning plasma pushes the piston down with. Electronic emissions are a whole different issue. Uh, I'll touch briefly on that real quickly. We are installing more and more electronic emissions, better fuel economy, easier start, smoother operation, less lead fouling because whereas a magneto puts out a 12,000 volt spark, um, okay, that sounds like a big number until you say like, ooh, electronic emission, 70,000 volts. Now we ran a little experiment here one night with our first electronic ignition system. We took the plugs out of all the cylinders. We put the plugs on the engine with ground leads so we had them all grounded. And then we pulled the prop through by hand. When the, when the, when the impulse couple went off, we saw a little blue-green spark go tick across the electrode. It was pink and blue. Lasted maybe a millisecond. It was just very quick. When we did the electronic ignition, what we saw was a quarter second blue pipe cleaner hanging up <laughs> big and fat at 70,000 volts so that's the difference between the two that's why electronic ignitions are becoming so much more popular to replace one mag on our aircraft uh, the numbers that we have with electronic ignitions on Tigers is that you'll save between anywhere between three quarters and a gallon an hour in fuel burning at the same power same fuel settings again getting smoother operation so, if you have any more suggestions, we'd like to say send them on to info at GrummanPolitsAssociation.com. We welcome your suggestions and what you'd like to see in videos. All these have come from our members. Again, I'd like to thank you for watching uh, the videos on our YouTube channel, Grumman Pilots. Thanks for supporting the GPA. We hope you have a nice day. Thank you.